Worm Online describes itself as the ultimate sandbox MMORPG, and in many respects it still is, even two decades on from its original conception. Despite humble beginnings, this Java-based game has deep and detailed systems, a perpetual, instantless world where you can eke out a meager existence or become a living legend. Where as seasons pass, you are given hundreds of skills to train and develop, a game where often the only limitation is the amount of time you're willing to dedicate to it. But is War Online worth playing in 2024? Whether you're a new player thinking about jumping in for the first time, or you're a returning veteran checking in on the game, this video will help give you a quick insight on the current state of the game and some of its notable pros and cons. Often, the strongest appeal for many people with Worm Online are the creative sandbox elements of the game. Use your digging to shape the terrain around you and leave your mark on the world. Use your mining skill to tunnel into the earth in search of valuable ores, gems, and create entire cities underground. Use your carpentry and masonry skills to make a humble abode or an epic castle. Or use your blacksmithing skills to fashion tools for yourself and fellow players to facilitate all of the above. And there is a lot of sandbox world for you to shape and explore, with the game currently boasting 16 separate servers which take the form of islands of various sizes. These are organized into three isolated clusters. The Southern Freedom Isles, the oldest and most prestigious servers, some of which are over 15 years old now and boast a long and storied history. The Northern Freedom Isles, the newest and most populated servers which are introduced in conjunction with Worm Online's release on Steam in 2020. And finally, the Epic Server Cluster, which are by far the least populated but offer faster leveling and a focus on PvP. As you take your first steps into the game world, it's worth keeping in mind that almost everything you see has been created and shaped by the players of the game. Highways, villages, boats, bridges, caves, tools, weapons, armor. When the new servers are created, they are a blank slate of unblemished wilderness and it's up to the community to tame it. Though given the perpetual nature of the servers, as villagers rise and fall, the wilderness is always seeking to reclaim its place. This aspect, the ability to make something from nothing, is very much a high point for Worm, and it's one that's only gotten better over time. Old players will be impressed to see new building materials, more decorative items, the ability to place objects on tables and walls, and the introduction of underground buildings. The level of freedom the game offers is truly impressive. Worm is one of the few MMOs where you can really make a noticeable and lasting impact on not just the community, but the game itself. Speaking of the community, despite being a comparatively small one, Worm Online is still extremely active. If you're somebody who wants to play with others, there are the in-game forums, official and unofficial discords, and of course, there is the in-game chats where you can connect with other players, with a huge variety of different villages and playstyles to suit just about anybody. Not only this, but there are frequent in-game events to help mix things up. These vary from slaying of unique creatures that take dozens or more players to bring down, the weekly rift events where players team together to fight waves of progressively stronger enemies to close a portal from one of Worm's moons, to the very chilled Impalong events, where Worm players come together in one location for a few days to improve and enchant each other's equipment for free and participate in boat races, pet fights and fashion shows. All of this being said though, it is worth acknowledging that Worm Online is an old game, like really old. And that's despite the fact that it's currently still being worked on and developed, getting routine bug fixes, graphical updates, and new content. There are some aspects that continue to betray the true foundations this game is built upon. 
The worst culprits are the UI and combat, both of which are straight from another era of game design. If you're a new player coming from a modern sandbox or MMO title, you will likely find these aspects of the game underwhelming at best. The UI, whilst customizable, is often unintuitive and obtuse for new players, and this extends to how you interact with the game world around you, being extremely click-heavy and requiring knowledge on how to set keybinds to make the game tolerable, which in of itself is its own struggle. Combat somehow manages to be worse at dating Worm than the UI, with it being little more than a glorified mud. And if you're young enough to not know what a mud is, I promise you, this is not a good thing. Combat primarily consists of passively watching text scroll by in your combat tab, accompanied with more unintuitive UI elements, which despite having been updated in the last few years, remain just as unhelpful and confusing to new players as all previous iterations. However, there is some good news on this front, with one of the upcoming updates being an in-game action overhaul, which will hopefully bring a slew of quality of life updates to how you interact with the game world, with the express goal of making the game more intuitive and easy to learn. While this does not have a confirmed release date, it is expected that this will be within 2024. Speaking of development, it is also worth talking about some of the new content additions that have made it into the game in the last few years. There are regular and numerous quality of life updates that have been introduced to the game since its first release, and this continues to this very day. Most recently, the game received the Resource Node update, which introduced visible nodes of resources that the player can forage or botanize to discover various types of resources. Returning players can also rediscover the old fishing, cooking, and animal husbandry systems, which have been revamped to have a huge amount of depth and complexity. There is also an overhauled journal system to allow players that need an additional sense of progress, a series of tasks and objectives to help them through their worm journey and will introduce them to new mechanics and systems accompanied with titles and special rewards. Additionally, the game has also introduced entirely new skills for players to explore, such as archaeology, which allows you to investigate ruins and piece together mainly mundane but occasionally interesting artifacts from old player settlements, along with the cartography skill, which gives players the ability to complete surveys of area of the game world to create maps of that location and integrate various markers onto their in-game map. Unfortunately, one of the downsides of these new, more complex skills is the stark contrast against how bare bones a lot of the other skills that exist in the game are. While Worm Online boasts about having 130 plus skills that you can train, realistically only half of that are worth any real note, with skills such as thatching, yo-yo, and fire making being as bland as you might expect, with few reasons to train them along with other skills such as tracking, traps, and climbing, which on the surface sound like they could be really interesting and extremely useful in a sandbox game, only to be completely lacking practical substance. The fact that Worm Online is still actively developed means that despite being free to play, it does exist off the back of its monthly premium payment model, while this is priced at a reasonable eight euros a month currently, it will be a deal breaker for some people. Being free to play does mean you have unlimited play time, but you will not be able to increase your skills past 20 and won't be able to unlock some advanced crafting and building options. Typically, a new player will get between 10 to 30 hours play time before they start to hit that skill limit though. More than enough time to decide whether you think the game is worth opening up your wallet for. You will also likely need to purchase in-game currency if you plan on claiming your own land to build on. Though it is currently worth noting that if you're somebody who has more time than money, you can earn in-game currency by doing odd jobs for other players or certain skills. Or you can simply join an established village for free. 
The topic of monetization leads quite nicely into perhaps the biggest question mark over Worm Online's future. In 2019, Worm was sold by its creator to a company called Game Chest Group, which is a Swedish company with various different businesses that it owns. At the time, it promised to be hands-off in the day-to-day -day running of the game, and for the most part, things continued on unchanged. This was the case right up until the first half of 2023, when the new CEO of Game Chess Group took an more active role in light of the company struggling financially. This directly resulted in a series of controversies, which led to many staff being fired or choosing to leave, a new cash shop and a bigger focus on monetization for the game going forwards. This aspect is the biggest uncertainty for Worm's future as to whether the game will still be around and in an enjoyable state in the next five years and beyond. If you're curious about this, you can check out my playlist documenting all of the Worm news and developments here. Overall, Worm is a niche game with some really special aspects that even modern games in the genre have failed to realize on the same level as Worm. It's still very grindy and slow, however it continues to develop and grow its content and is certainly more respectful of your time than it was 10 to 15 years ago. If you're looking for a fast paced and exciting MMO to play in 2024, Worm Online is not it. However, if you're someone who is looking for a gritty but extremely satisfying MMO and you're willing to overlook some blemishes, this game is still very much worth a try in my opinion. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments, and if you found this video useful, please leave a like. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one.